so why didn't he kill Vader? Like, he had him. He probably could have killed him. <laughs> and I would imagine it would have been justified. He's killed Darth Maul twice. Um, he's killed a lot of beings? Grievous? You know? So... And he, in, in the conversation with Riva, he said, well, you show mercy and... But is mercy justified? Now, when he killed Maul and... and, and uh, well, I'm trying to think. No, he killed Maul the second time <laughs> after uh, the, the goings-on in, in Obi-Wan Kenobi. So he... The, the f I guess he could probably justify it because there's still feelings for, for Anakin. Um, I'm thinking out loud. So there's still feelings for Anakin, so maybe that's why he doesn't want to do it, I guess. But, you know, you come to think of all the destruction that Vader ended up, that Vader did and will end up doing in the next, you know, 10, 15 years. I don't know. I mean, Vader was defenseless. Yeah, he was too strong to be taken prisoner. He would have been possible for him to be taken prisoner. I mean, the Empire would have destroyed, just would have, the Empire is so corrupt, obviously, they just would have freed Vader anyway, and there would have been a full-scale war. So maybe that's what he was thinking. It just wasn't explained. Um, but the fact that I was just like, and obviously he couldn't kill Vader because then we wouldn't have had episode four. Um, but maybe there was a better way to do it. You know, maybe there was, you know, if, if he was about to, and then something got between them or Vader escaped or the, the inquisitor, grand inquisitor came and, and swept him up something. It just, that irked me. Um, and I have very nitpicky friends who nitpick everything, and I think they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna nitpick that. I'm thinking of my friends here. Um, so and then you know, I heard an interview with the writer, one of the writers, and he said, "Well, you know the the fact that when when Leia saw in Episode Four saw Ben, she wasn't like, oh my God, oh it's so good to see you. This is great." Ma. So maybe in the next 10 years, it'll maybe be explained because there might be some more Kenobis. McGregor, Ewan McGregor is, was interested in, um, in, in doing this again. And, and I really hope there are. There's got, I mean, I mean they, they left it wide open with just teachings from Qui-Gon, which would be great. And maybe uh, Kenobi would see Organa and uh, Bail Organa and Leia and go on more adventures outside of Tatooine. Um, but they didn't, you know, I, I don't think Ben alluded to the fact that, hey, Leia, let's, um, let's make pretend we don't know each other just for the, and he kind of did. He, he kind of did in, in one of the lines, so I guess that can kind of be explained. It's so hard to, to fit things, and you want, I was listening to uh, the Ringerverse, excellent, excellent podcast with um, Joe and Mal, I just, uh, Joanna Robinson, and I don't remember Mal's last name. But one of them, I think it was Joanna, made a point where, listen, if it, <laughs> the joy you got from seeing young Leia, if it, if it, if there's inconsistencies with episode four, so be it. And, 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 and I do agree. It's just trying to figure out how to, how to square that circle. Um, so nitpicking aside, uh, I really, really liked uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I just... I wasn't a huge fan of the prequels and you know the, the prequels are starting to get their uh starting to get some justice for them i the, the adults who were kids back then you know they're starting to really fall in love with it again and, it, and they're being revisited to really what they mean in today's context i think lucas was smart enough to, to write a political tale and <laughs> the rise of an empire and unfortunately you know, we're seeing something similar to that right now about what the Republican Party does to stay in power. Well, they, they, they formed, they, they threw a coup, a, 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 a party, a, a coup led by the party leaders and now just backed by at least 100 um, uh, candidates. 
So, uh, uh, so watching the prequels in that context, uh, I, I think it, it, it brings an unfortunate timelessness um, to, what, to what societies do. Um, so my problem with the prequels was, you know, the, the effects looked a little cartoony. I wasn't a fan of Jar Jar. Um, and then, you know, the character development and, and, and all of that. Uh, but for the most part, I think the spirit of the prequels uh, holds its own, even though maybe the visuals don't. Um, but the fact that we got uh, more of Kenobi fleshed out, especially during the in-between period, we got to see McGregor. Uh, really dive into the character because Obi-Wan, you know, for the prequels, it, 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 the development wasn't as rich as, as these six episodes. So I'm glad to see that. Um, I didn't think in the prequels that Obi-Wan and Anakin had like this brotherhood of a relationship. And I think, you know, with, with the cartoons and, and somewhat of Kenobi, it's, it's building upon how close they were. I don't think it's there yet, but they're, they're trying to you know, trying to put in some, some context. I think the cartoons did a good job. The, the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, you know, if you didn't see the cartoons, if you didn't see the, the Clone Wars, you, you wouldn't know. So if you're going straight into Kenobi, you'd be like, why are they still close? Um, but, you know, th- these are minor criticisms. Uh, I think fair criticisms, but they're, they're minor criticisms to, I think, what the show was as far as the action, which I thought was great. Seeing Leia was just an incredible surprise. The actress who played her was brilliant. Um, I, I think she just got the Carrie, Carrie Fisher slash Princess Leia's personality down. Um, I know there were complaints about uh, how just advanced and precocious uh, she was and no child would, would be like that. And, you know, this was a couple of years ago. I would um, I would have the same criticisms. I'm starting to to turn a little on that. There are children who are you know highly highly uh, advanced you know, but still have the generalities of of what kids do. The kids are more more impulsive and they just haven't learned um, as much as adults have. Uh, and again, that's a that's a generality. There there are some kids that in in some ways are much more uh, pleasant and smarter and compassionate than adults. Um, but generally, it's, it's the impulsiveness. Uh, and that's just biology. And all the changes that are going on uh, is happening. But, but again, that doesn't mean uh, children aren't pleasant and great and, uh, and, and really make a difference in, in the lives. You see it. You see it with... Um, uh, children who have to unfortunately be activists, children who are resilient from from trauma, children who are capable to learn when uh, when when met with any kind of a, a physical or, or mental adversity, it's there and and it and it helps them grow into uh, who they become as adults. So, and and with that said, uh, Leia is very very strong in the force. She just doesn't know uh, that she has it. Um, she just thinks, oh, well, you know, I can read people and I can read them really well. And she may think, well, I've been learning about politics and human behavior since I, before I learned to talk. You know, so she's being just trained to become, you know, the, the politician she was going to be before the rebellion really uh, took force. And then if you, you know, if you, if you go into the, the sequel trilogies and, and even in, in the books and, and all that, she, she rose to uh, great political heights to where, you know, by the sequel trilogy, she was a general. She led the, uh, the resistance against, against the First Order, and the resistance, I believe, was, was an arm of the New Republic um, before <laughs> and the New Republic got destroyed. Like, everybody got destroyed in, in the sequel uh, trilogies. With that, so yeah, that, that I I I really enjoyed Episode Seven. I thought it was a lot of fun. I had some problems with it. Last Jedi is one of the best movies ever made. Um, Rise of Skywalker, I just it, that hurts to watch. I've seen it twice, and I don't know if I can watch it again. It was terrible, 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 terrible. Anyway, so back to Obi Wan. Um, so yeah, so 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 Leia was just. I, I really enjoyed the character. I really enjoyed the performance. 
I enjoyed your seeing the beginnings of the rebellion. And we're going to see that in Andor as well. I think Andor is going to pick up where Obi-Wan leaves off. Um, you're seeing Obi-Wan, you know, refusing the call and then all of a sudden gaining the strength, but then being defeated at first. And then that, that I really liked both fights, the psychology of both fights, but that second fight was awesome. Awesome. And it was short, but it really, it really drove home the line. You know, when we last met, I was but a learner, but now I am the, I am the master because Vader was handily defeated on that second fight. Seeing... Hayden Christensen not only is Anakin, but then when the helmet got slashed, uh, was I mean, really, really, really well done. Really well done um, to where it kind of gave Obi-Wan peace um, in a way because Obi-Wan was probably guilty about, you know, he thought maybe it was his fault that Anakin turned to, to the dark side. And Anakin was like, no, I, I did this. Get the fuck out of here. Don't be so full of yourself. Um, so, uh, so that was just with the fight, and then what happened afterwards was really good to see. Uh, the way it was shot, I thought it was really well done, the, especially the last episode. The, the scenes of Tatooine uh, were, were just beautiful. The, oh God, see Owen and Beru again, just how, you know, how you, you got to be tough living in, in, in Tatooine. And um, I think Reva was hurt before going to them, or maybe she got shot right away, and she wasn't thinking the clearest either she was struggling with a lot of emotion so they were able to get some shots in uh, before Reva was just like you know she couldn't couldn't do what she set out to do which confused me a bit because if her mission was to kill Vader and she didn't do it I don't know if she knew Luke was Vader's son so why would she go after Luke in the first place unless it was a way to draw Obi-Wan? But why would she want to do that too? But unless there was a, unless she wanted to kill the Jedi, why would she go off on her own and do it? So I was confused about that. I'll, I'll read into it more. Maybe there's something I'm overlooking. Again, I just watched the episode, so I'm just kind of, uh, you know, as soon as the episode ended, I hit record and I'm talking about it. That's... Most of this podcast is like that, so I can't really dig deep. But, uh, you know, I'm sure on future podcasts I can talk about this uh, more. So, overall, uh, well, let me start with Moses Ingram, uh, obviously. And I hate the fact that I have to say, obviously, the, the treatment of her was absolutely terrible. Um, not a surprise, though, unfortunately, because John Boyega was treated the same way. Um, Kelly, Kelly Marie Tran was treated the same way. At, at least now, uh, Ewan McGregor and Disney really backed her up. I don't think they backed up Kelly Marie Tran at all. That was that was a disgrace what they did. Uh, it's just one of the other reasons Rise of Skywalker was so horrible is that they didn't give, give Rose anything. They gave her nothing to do, and which and and it made the the racists feel vindicated, like they were being listened to. And not to mention, it just didn't make sense story-wise. Um, and John Boyega didn't get the best tr treatment um, in, the, in, in Rise of Skywalker either. Force Awakens was great character development. Uh, Last Jedi, it started to build a little bit on how he was learning. Um, I can understand the criticism. Maybe he could have been given more to do, but it showed, his character arc was really set for what could have been... I mean, I read... Um, the the uh, the I think it was the the Trevorrow script, a uh, duel of the fates, and that was a really good character development for for um, Finn. It showed spoiler alert, but it showed him. I, I think oh god, now I'm trying to remember getting together with with other former stormtroopers and you know kind of what Rise of Skywalker was building because he saw like other another stormtrooper. So maybe if they focused on that, like who he was and who he's now becoming. But anyway. Um, so, so uh, um, Moses uh, Ingram, back to Moses Ingram, uh, really good performance. I remember one of my friends criticized her at the beginning, uh, not, not, uh, not because of her race, just how uh, the character was written. He said, well, she's not menacing enough. And my argument was, it was, it's not about her looking menacing and looking scary and going, ha, 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 I will take over the world. There's enough menacing characters like that. Her arc, and we came to find out, well, we knew from the very beginning she was, um, she was that child. They wouldn't have had that in there if 
you know, if, if you didn't see that this is who that, that child would become. So I knew right away. So we didn't really know her motivation until later, which I thought was a great little twist. She was all in this for Vader, and I think the dark side just clouded her uh her where uh, just her vision and and um that the dark side rage just made her do evil things because she just wanted that one point of revenge and getting vader and, and if she has to burn everybody down and kill everybody to get to vader that's what she's gonna do so i think that arc was 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 really well done and it was her ambition that that um that drove her character and you know she i she was you know quite the formidable fighter uh and um and she was and she was cunning um and and it was, and it was because of her ambition what where she started to to break was you know dealing with the trauma of her childhood and you know with with what's been going with what happened in in Uvalde in the school shootings and then just to hear the stories about her having to, to play dead it's just it, it really you know, a terrible coincidence in that it really hit close to, to what happened in Uvalde. Um, and it just shows that what trauma can do. Trauma combined with um, a, a raw, untrained Jedi, uh, that's where the dark side can pick you up. So, and maybe that's why Obi-Wan didn't kill Vader, because that would have been too much of the dark side, I guess, because Vader was vulnerable. But again... You heard my rant at the beginning. So I, I, I liked Reva's arc. Again, I was still confused about why she wanted to go to Luke. But that character is wide open now. Wide open to where who knows what she's going to do. There's so much more of a story to tell. And it doesn't have to revolve around the Skywalkers, which, which I think we're, we're starting to see uh, more and more as it goes on. You can use the Skywalkers as a base uh, and then expand from there, which is great. Um, and I would love to see Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon and, and what they're going to do. It was so great to see Liam Neeson. I'm like, oh my God, you know, um, cause the Qui-Gon's such a fascinating character. You would have liked to have seen what, what would have happened had he lived cause he was such a rebel. Uh, you know, had he lived, you know, maybe Anakin would not have become Vader because they were so in tune, but had he lived, he may have joined Dooku or he may have led the, um, the separatists based on, you know, Maybe I don't know. I don't know if he. I don't know if he would have turned that far, but he had that rebellious streak in him. So, um, so yeah. Um, trying to think what else. I think that's. I think that's it. I'm sure I'm missing something, but there's a lot more to talk about with this. Uh, overall, very good. It leaves me wanting to see more. Um, it's you know I'm biased when it comes to Star Wars because I've been watching it my whole life. Um, but it was one of those shows where I couldn't wait when it was on. Like I work at, at noon and I, and, uh, so like I was up at like nine and I had to just do things around, around the apartment. And then when I was done, I like around 10 o'clock, I started watching it and I just couldn't wait. And I did that every single time. I just wanted to avoid spoilers. And I have some friends who, did you see this? I can't believe it. I'm like, I didn't see it yet. God damn it. But, uh, so yeah, I just show I can't wait to watch and just because you know it's just all of these characters you know it was funny on the second fight it, there was a scene where Vader is burying Ben alive and Vader had the high ground so I didn't think they would be so silly to have Vader say no I have the high ground but you know that's what he thought and that's what I was thinking I'm sure a lot of people thought that that way too so and seeing um, Ian McDermott as Emperor Palpatine is always good, even though it was ridiculous that he was brought back in Rise of Skywalker. Uh, the dialogue between Vader and the Emperor, what stood out to me was that the Emperor was, uh, was being um, uh, pretty kind to him. Um, not judgmental, was asking him open-ended questions to try to have Vader help himself. Um, but at the same time, kind of, you know, uh, in an indirect way, ordering him not to be so obsessed with Obi-Wan. So in a very strange way and an abusive way, um, showing concern for uh, Vader and at the same time thinking of the Empire. So it wasn't what you may expect the Emperor to do, uh, 
and order him around. Um, he was uh, definitely more friendly and um, or as friendly as the emperor can be. And you kind of saw that uh, in Return of the Jedi as well. Um, from what I remember, just uh, not treating Vader necessarily as a subordinate, but hey, we've been through this for a while. We've been through a lot. My friend, my friend, my friend. And with that, it was uh, not scolding Vader at all in Obi-Wan Kenobi, but just kind of like, hey, man, you, you sure you're doing the right thing here? Um, but obviously the obsession with Obi Obi Wan uh, did did not end, and it's uh, I guess up to the uh, the canon writers, uh, whether it's the comic books or the TV show, to uh, to fill in those gaps of uh, more of the the thought process of Vader and how he just couldn't let Obi Wan go, and hopefully we'll find out. Like I said before, hopefully there's more seasons of Obi Wan Kenobi, uh, if. Obi-Wan can let Vader go as well. I wish the bond was stronger in the movies. The bond became a little stronger in the cartoons. Um, but still not enough for me to be considered uh, the brotherhood that was um, so excellently uh, spoken about by McGregor in Episode 3. Okay. Anyway, I think that's it. So um, please rate, share this podcast and you can find me on twitter at mmam podcast you can find me on facebook at mmam podcast you can email me at mmam podcast at gmail.com so speaking of the uh of the empire uh great way to fight empires is to be well informed uh, so get your information from credible sources. Uh, some sources are BBC, NPR, New York Times, USA Today, uh, Washington Post. Don't fall for the lies that they're telling you and do your best to spread the truth to whoever you can, whether it's on social media, whether it's the best way is like through friends and, and, and family, people that you're close to, people who will at least listen. Though That's the start to kind of break people out of uh, you know, a lot too much for my liking, but out of out of the cult that they're in right now when it comes to Trump and the Republican Party, and and unfortunately the rep most of the re Republican Party in general. So a good way is you know, listening, having compassion, making sure they feel heard, and then sharing the the information that's true, uh, based on uh, experts that know how to gather the facts and know how to get them out there in a hopefully uh, and hopefully memorable way. And we're seeing that with the January 6th committee hearings and hopefully uh, justice will be served before an empire starts to grow uh, or a dictatorship starts to grow. So, you know, all information, knowledge is power. And that includes COVID too. Virus ain't over yet, folks. Uh, so do all you can to protect yourself and those around you. Knowledge is power. All right, stay powerful. Bye.